Professionals from Berlin's ballet company, the Staatsballett, on unfamiliar ground. Performing in the overalls usually worn by the city street cleaners in the middle of Berlin. They're our number three favorite this week. The Opera House is their usual venue, but to mark the beginning of autumn, they're strutting their stuff on the streets, an eye-catching sight even for non-dance lovers. Sweeping and dancing, a performance as short as it is surprising. Just a few minutes, then it's on to the next spot. An enjoyable way to combine high art with more everyday activities. Dances with brooms swept us away, and it's our number three. It was a nosedive into the modern era, the invention of futurism 100 years ago. This week's number two is an exhibition at Berlin's Martin Gropius Bau that pays tribute to this artistic and social movement which celebrated speed and technology. Futurism wanted to shatter the world and reconstitute it. In painting, at least, it managed to do so. Its main remaining legacy is the introduction of writing, weight and sound into visual art. Brightly coloured marionettes recall pre-World War I innocence. Languages of Futurism in Berlin provides insight into the one-time avant-garde, our number two favourite of the week. Neatly shoehorned into the Berlin cityscape, a new library for Humboldt University, prize-winning architecture and our number one favourite this week. It was designed by Swiss architect Max Dudler. Spare shapes, elegant materials. The reading room is spectacular. A terraced landscape with more than 300 workstations. Warm wood tones soften its austerity. Max Dudler's library, a distinctive building that makes you want to read and enjoy your surroundings every day till midnight. For us, it's number one.